So with Wimbledon done and dusted for another year, we have some massive things to talk about, including the world number one ranking on the men and the women's side. It's been a very interesting week with some really interesting results. Let's start with those results because we had two tournaments, men and women's Wimbledon. Starting on the women's side, and we had Bondrusova winning her first Grand Slam title, beating Jabir in the final 6-4, 6-4, and she got a massive boost in the rankings because of it. And on the men's side, Carlos Alcaraz. He takes out Novak Djokovic in an epic five-setter. 1-6-7-6-6-1-3-6-6-4 to lift his second Grand Slam trophy. And spoiler alert, he stays number one because of that as well. Let's go have a look at the players that outside the top 10 got a boost in the rankings thanks to Wimbledon points. Starting with Chris Eubanks. He goes up to number 31 in the world, 12 spot higher than last week after making the quarterfinals of Wimbledon, eventually losing to Medvedev in a close match. So he's at a career high there. Roman Fuel, and he also goes up to a career high ranking of number 43 in the world, 49 spots higher than last time due to the quarterfinal of Wimbledon that he made as well. And Alina Svetolina, she rockets up the ranking. 49 spots up to number 27 in the world after making the semifinals of Wimbledon. So some massive results there for some players way outside the top 10 getting some huge rankings boosts. A couple of players have fall down the rankings out of the top 10, not because they lost points, but because they got pushed out by better players and people overtaking them. Nick Kyrgios didn't lose any points from last year, but he does still drop down four spots to number 37 after not being able to play Wimbledon and other players overtaking him in the rankings. Yu Bing Wu also goes down 16 spots to number 78 in the world after losing first round of Wimbledon and a lot of players doing better than him. Karolina Pliskova, she goes down four spots to number 23 in the world Again, after other players did better than her at Wimbledon, pushing her down outside of the top 20 now. So some players there that didn't lose points necessarily, but because players did better than they did at Wimbledon, they got pushed down the ranks. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings and actually not that many changes up the top. With Iga Swiatek staying at number one, keeping Sabalenka behind at number two. Rabakina stays at three with Pagula just behind at number four. Garcia at five, Jabur at six. And had she had won Wimbledon, she would have actually been in the top three. But unfortunately, she's just down there at number six. Very close behind number five. Goff stays at number seven. We do have a change on the bottom with Zachary going down one spot to number nine with Kvitova pushing ahead at number eight thanks to having a better result at Wimbledon. And down the bottom of the top 10 at number 10, Von Drusova getting into the top 10 for the first time in her career. 32 spots higher than last week, pushing Kazakina out. So a lot of points there going towards her ranking, and she debuts in the top 10 for the first time in her career. Having a look at the race of the finals now, and things are starting to get really interesting with Sabalenka still at one, Sviontek at number two, and those two players have actually qualified for the WTA finals, so you can get those locked in. Six spots left to go. Rebecca is still at number three, just behind the cutoff point with Pagula at number four, but Von Drusova, she rockets up the rankings up to that number five spot, 23 spots higher than last week. And Jabur also rockets up into that number six spot. 11 spots higher than last week. So both making the final of Wimbledon. Of course, Mwandrus for winning. So they got a lot of boosts. Pushing Kvitova down to number seven. Mukova goes down to number eight. Goff goes down to number nine. And Bencic stays at number 10 with Krajikova. And Ostapenko falling out of the top 10 completely. So now we've got two spots down, six to go. And with Wimbledon out of the way, there's only the US Open that is worth 2,000 points that's left. So it's going to be interesting to see who out of the eight players also qualify with Sabalenka's fiance going forward. Going over to the men's side of the rankings now and at the top Carlos Alcaraz stays at number one holding Djokovic back and also winning Wimbledon extending his lead against Djokovic by almost a thousand points now but of course the US Open coming up soon Alcaraz has a lot to defend Djokovic stays at number two with Medvedev at number three Ruud at number four with Sidzi Pass at number five Runa at six Rublev at seven Sinner stays at number eight despite making the semi-finals with Fritz at number nine Francis Tiafo rounds at the top ten so no change to the rankings this week mainly due to the fact that Wimbledon was worth all the points and no one lost points from last year. So we didn't get to see any dramatic changes like we usually do after a big slam. But Carlos Alcaraz extending his lead, that is big news. Looking at the race of the finals now and things are starting to get really interesting with Carlos Alcaraz officially qualifying for the end of year finals on points. He also won Wimbledon, which helps, but on points. Also overtaking Djokovic to get that number one spot again. Djokovic goes to number two, but he's just outside of qualification. And of course, there is the Grand Slam rule. He has won two slams, so he's more than likely to qualify anyway. Medvedev stays at three with Sissi Pass at number four. But Yannick Sinner, the semi-final, he goes up to number five, pushing Runa down to number six. Rublev down to number seven. Rud at number eight. Fritz at number nine. And Hashinov rounds out the top ten. So again, not too many rankings, but with Carl Zalkaraz qualifying and Novak Djokovic not far behind, there aren't that many spots left to the race of the finals for 2023. So there you have it. Some very interesting rankings changes, of course, outside the top 10. Seems like there's a little bit more going on. In the top 10, it's actually pretty relaxed. I mean, the top five players in both the men and women's rankings didn't change that much. 
The race of the finals are heating up though. With Elkrez qualifying, Sabalenka Sviante qualifying, Djokovic not too far behind, unless he uses that Grand Slam rule, which I don't think he would need to. He'll just get a couple extra points and be fine. But let me know in the comments below. What's been the biggest shock for you this week? Are you shocked that we didn't get a change at the top? Of course, Sabalenka, she had the chance to take Sviante's number one ranking. And Djokovic had a chance to take back his number one ranking against Elkaraz, but neither of those things happened. And the players at the top stayed at the top for another week. Let me know in the comments below what has been the biggest shock post-Wimbledon. Now we look at the US Open. Let's see what happens on the hard courts in a couple weeks.